recording. Okay. Hello, viewers, if we've got any yet. Um, this is the first video version of Your Creativity. It's a, a blog that um, asks eight questions of a guest about their creative creativity, their process, and things of that way. Today we've got Will Patterson, a person I recently found on YouTube who I I just really enjoy his videos. Uh, say hello, Will. Hello, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let, let's start off about, um, you know, how how did your day go today? What what would you have on your plate today? Cool. So today I've been um, what have I been doing? Hang on, let me just look at my work over here. I've just been uh, doing some uh, logo design for a church, um, and I've also been doing some hand lettering work today for a company, and I've been creating or writing a blog which goes in side by side with my videos. Um, for tomorrow, and I've also worked a little bit on my course that's coming out. So, okay. Uh, how many courses have you um, done so far? How many of you those put, have you put together? Officially three, uh, but you won't find two of them because, uh, well, you can find them, but I don't ever name the website because I don't like the website very much. The uh, the people that got me to do the course aren't the best, um, and they didn't satisfy me when I did them, but I was in an exclusive contract with the uh, course with them. But the the other one that you can find is on Udemy, the best one. <laughs> cool. All righty. Well, let's get started with the the interview, and then that'll probably lead to some discussions. Uh, cool. The first question is, describe what you do. Right, so... This is like, it's quite difficult, but I call myself a creative entrepreneur um, in short. But in reality, the specifics of it, I'm a hand lettering artist uh, that works in branding and logo design. I specialize in branding. Um, I started five years ago and it's all stemmed down from my YouTube channel, from teaching people, which has had great success. And um, from the success of the YouTube channel, I got more clients. So I became successful in client work. So then I moved on to selling products, which is becoming successful. And yeah, so I just create things, make things look nice. And I'm also providing my service to other companies and creative individuals. Now, I, and I, I think that's what drew me to you because I'm very similar. I just like making beautiful things and help helping, you know, companies and whatever, you know, improve their stuff. Yeah. So you started about five years ago, so did I. Um, the, the second question is, how did you get where you are? So um, where I am at now, or what, like, so it's kind of, um, I want to do this sort of raw, so I might have to pause to think every now and then. But where I'm at now, the, the way I got here is just from keeping going. Um, I didn't get very good results at school. Um, didn't get any qualifications from school at all. Um, but I went to college and did business administration for like, I, I think, about a year, two years. And I quit that uh, in my second year because I didn't want to. Um, carry on with it because I felt God was taking me into a different path um, and I felt the uh, the sort of it's a weird sort of feeling at the back of my mind but was to pursue this even though I wasn't even doing this at all I couldn't even draw so I started pursuing it uh, I quit college and just had faith in Jesus that he would do something hopefully and then I just practiced from there on read lots of books and did everything that I personally could do and uh, the rest is what God did for me. So yeah, you just gotta you gotta go where your your heart takes you. You know, sometimes it's not out of a book. Always, you know, sometimes it's just you know where you feel you need to go. That's right. Yeah, you're getting questions in the chat now. Oh, <laughs> How was up? Okay, let me take a look there. We'll go there. Okay, the first question um, that they put in there is, "What was your first job as a graphic designer, and when was it?" My first job, it was for, um, hang on, I can remember. It was for 
my neighbour across the road, I think. Um, I like, hang on. Yeah, it was. It was a neighbour across the road who's a, a decorator. And it was like a pretty cool first job, actually, because he lives like over there, like literally opposite me. And or he used to live opposite me. He lives a bit further away now. But um, yeah, so he wanted me to design his logo and design his business card. And basically, he's become a successful decorator now. So he has like my logo plastered on his van and everything like that. Oh, very um, cool. So yeah. Oh, we're not interviewing Naomi. Naomi's at uh, work still, I think, while she's at home. She just finished work. She works in the nursery. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, we'll, Derek. We'll do a sequel. <laughs> we, will, we, will, we will. I'll get Naomi on next time. Yeah, defo. Uh, the fourth question is, who has inspired you most and why? Who's inspired me most? Um, so there's a guy on Instagram that if you're a hand lettering artist or just anyone who likes hipstery things, then he's called Noel Shively. I think I said, said his name right. Okay. Um, he's known as Noel the Artist, uh, and he calls himself not an artist. He's not an artist, he says, but he is. He's really good. He's a hand lettering artist, and uh, yeah, he creates these really cool rustic type um quotes uh and he's got his own cool style it's very minimalistic but also rustic at the same time and it's just a totally new style and i absolutely love it and i remember seeing that and uh thinking years ago when he had like i think a couple thousand uh, followers on instagram i was like that is awesome i want to sort of like uh go down that route of creating things that look hand-drawn um and i think that was like four or five years ago and uh that was when I first started. And then from there, I've just been following him, love his work, friends with him on Facebook now. I try and talk to him. I've got other inspirations, but I think he's one of my main ones. So, yeah. Very, very cool. Uh, I'll I'll check him out after we, we get done here to see where Do it. your inspiration came from. Okay. So, so with these um, interviews I do, those four, first four questions are always the same for everybody. And then these next four, I, I kind of adapt to the subject. So, cool. uh, question five. Well, excuse me. Question five. How do you deal adapt to something that you haven't done before? How do I adapt? Yeah. Um. So, if I've not done something before, then I just try and go for it. And <laughs> it sounds ridiculous, but. That's just sort of what I've done so far in what I do is just go for it and like keep trying. Um, if it's brand new and I'm go whether it's like something simple like a new typeface or uh, trying to create a different style or whatever, then um, I'll just give it a go. I'll probably have a look at a lot of inspiration, have a quick check on Google and stuff like that. Uh, just to make sure that I'm heading it sort of in the right direction. And um, as long as I've achieved something small from doing something new, then I I'm all good with that because it's always baby steps. And if I, if I do baby steps, then, you know, 10 baby steps is like a leap. So I just carry on doing it like that. So, yeah. So, yeah, just go go all in. That's so, right. Something I just noticed, green background. Glasses, plaid shirt. This was well, not <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, we're, we're quite the same. It looks green, but it's actually turquoise, and I'm painting it into chalkboard. They're like, um, I hate them, but they're like wardrobes that I keep all my stuff in in the office, and I'm going to paint them black and make them into blackboards and stuff. Oh, nice. Uh, next question is... Um, what led you to develop YouTube videos? So YouTube started, I can't remember when it started. I think it was 2012 when I was um, learning uh, all about design and I was I got my first client and everything. And um, I had a few clients under my belt by then. But um, I was looking just for other people's variations and how they use Illustrator. Because for me, um, I learned it all by myself, really. I didn't really look at too many videos online, learning about it. I sort of just picked up the software quite easily. Um, and that's just because I was a computer geek at school. I absolutely loved uh, playing around with different softwares. And um, 
using it was just more of a fun experience rather than a learning experience. So I've learned it in a different way. That's a bit more interesting, I think, than others. So when I searched to do a specific effect on uh, YouTube and I couldn't find it, um, I would just make my own. And that's how it came up. And if someone else did it in a different way, I'd realize that the way that I do it, I personally think was better. So, so you you did, did it as a way to solve your own, own problem and help others. That's right. Yeah. So if, like it was a community back then. I had a, quite a few friends who wanted to learn different things, and so I put them out on YouTube for them. Really, fantastic. Um, question seven, what is your favorite part of the design process? Um, the favorite part of the design process is the, um, I don't know the name for it, but I think it's the final sketch, if that's a name for it. It's the cross between when I'm uh, going from concept on paper to uh, the final sketch. So what I'll do is I have like a moleskin in front of me. Like I have a big moleskin here, which is like what I use for all my concepts. Then I have this other moleskin, which is just a sketchbook. And um, when I'm drawing in this moleskin, I'll just do a bunch of different variations, maybe different looks of a certain hand lettered piece or logo design. And then uh, once I've found the concept that I'm really happy with, that I've surprised myself with, I'll just go ahead into my notebook, start gridding it up uh, and start sketching. And from there, um, I'll just create the whole piece in pencil. And that's my favorite part. My least favorite part is probably inking it because I always get it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, that's why I've stopped myself from getting into inking because, you know, it's permanent, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I do use um, a lot of tracing paper. I used to, but not, but like, it's just another bit of effort, isn't it? Getting tracing paper on it. But it is safer, a lot safer. Yeah. Especially as you get more and more practice, you get get better at it. That's right. And the eighth question I always leave to be kind of a fun one. Um, what is your favorite beverage and why? Guinness. Um, it's a <laughs> beer. It's an ale. I'm actually drinking out of a Guinness glass at the minute. But... Uh, um, I don't know. I just like it. I went when I turned eighteen. I went to the pub, um, and in the pub, there's like this horrible stuff called Stella and other weird lagers, and they taste weird and not very nice. Uh, then I tried this dark stuff, or I tried my brother's dark beer, and I liked it. And it's my favorite beverage. Not like as in. Um, I, I drink it all the time. It's only when I go out, I really drink Guinness. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know why. I just like the richness of it and everything else. And it's just, uh, I don't know, it just takes me back to when I first started going to the pubs and stuff. So, yeah. It, it's not my not my favorite. I've, I've had it, I've, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I like lighter stuff. I like Blue Moon. And then, you know, we've got some local brews here in Utah that, you know, I like quite a bit. Cool. Now, what, is there anything else that um, you'd like to add that kind of applies to our, our conversation? Um, really, if, if anyone's just starting, like uh, if, you, if you're just starting doing design or if you're right in the midst of doing it or whatever, then my real sort of piece of advice, if I was to give any advice, uh, would be just to keep going and don't see failures as in failures see them as um like another step forward and learn from you like your bad experiences and there's a cool quote from a book um i think it's a christian book i can't remember the guy who wrote it but uh, he says it doesn't matter if you if you fail as long as you're failing upwards then you're fine and um if you're going around in circles or if it feels like you're going around in circles as long as you're going upwards, going around in circles, then it, it's okay. Because um, I think a lot of the times when you're in the creative industry, um, especially when you work by yourself as a freelancer and you've got no one to talk to and no one to help you out with some of your work, then you can feel isolated and you don't know where to go or you feel a lack of guidance. So if you feel like that, it's okay. Everyone else feels like it. You just got to keep going and try your best. Yeah, I totally agree with that. 
my brother's also a graphic designer and I, I message him all the time with things that, you know, I'm confused about or what he's had experience with because he's done about twice as long as I have. Yeah. Now, if uh, people wanted to, you know, follow you on online, um, where, where can they find you? Um, you can find me from anywhere, like, but you probably want to find me on Instagram, which is, if I type it in the chat, it's Will Pat, just like that. That's my handle. Um, you can follow me on Twitter and everything else, but go to my Instagram, and that's where I post most of my work. Uh, it's sort of like my mini portfolio that everyone can have a look at. Beautiful work. And his YouTube, He this week he's added quite a few. Has it been every day so far? Yeah, every day. So Monday and today. And I'm making one tomorrow, so there's no video tomorrow. There might be like a, a vlog tomorrow on my second channel, but um, it depends how I feel with it. So, um, yeah, but like I generally I'm trying to work out what I'm doing now because I've got creative bar coming out on Mondays. Um, and then I've got this vlog thing that I do, which I don't know where to put it in the week, um, whether it's a Wednesday or a Tuesday after creative bar, um, I might have to space it out a little bit. So whether or not I put it at the end of the week and one at the start of the week, I'm not too sure yet, but I, I don't know. I don't have any sort of content that could last every single day of the week. If I had something I would, but like, you know, it's difficult. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much for uh, joining us. I appreciate you being on this uh, experiment with the, the video version okay. of it. So thank you very much. No worries. This guy has asked a question. Can I just answer oh, it? Is that yeah. okay? Uh, Gabriel's answered a asked. Okay. So it says, have you read any books about graphic design? And if so, which ones can you recommend? Um, the books I've read, they're not here at the minute, but um, a lot of them were just exercise books uh, that you can find on Amazon if you type in graphic design exercise books. And also for like inspiration, that's the only sort of books that I get now. If you type in logo type on Amazon, you'll be able to get that for like, I think it's £12 that I bought it for. Um, and it's a really nice book. It's got full of all these famous logo designs and they explain who created them and how they were created. So go check that out on Amazon. I think they're on my blog. I'm not too sure. So you can go and check that out. Great. Alrighty. Thank you. No worries. Thank you very much.